It was a bright and sunny day. People are throwing frisbees on the beach while others lounge on comfy chairs sipping their favorite fruit shakes. Kids run around with donut floaties around their waist, enjoying the feel of the warm sand under their feet. Indeed, it was a perfect beach day especially for Esty who loves spending her days on the beach. She prefers reading a book while the ocean waves play a calming music and the wind gently touches her hair. But she also loves to play frisbee with her friends, build sandcastles, and collect seashells to add to her growing collection. But little did Esty know that her dream trip to the beach would turn into a disaster. While lounging on her towel, basking in the warm sun, she noticed something strange happening in the distance. The water started to recede and the once ocean floor is now filled with teeming fishes. At first, people were curious and excited and came rushing to grab some fish. But Esty remembered that this was one of the signs of a tsunami. She alerted her family and friends. She screamed at the top of her lungs. A tsunami's coming! Everyone, run! The water rushed in. And the waves grew larger and more violent by the second. Indeed, this was not an ordinary wave. This was a tsunami. What did Esty do? Will the people survive the tsunami? What if you receive news of a tsunami hitting your home, what will you do? In this episode of How to Survive the Science Way, we will discuss how you can keep yourself and your loved ones safe from these giant waves. Learn what to do before, during and after a tsunami so you can survive and help others live too. Tsunamis are among the deadliest natural disasters that can occur on our planet. They are triggered by earthquakes near the seafloor that displace large amounts of water, resulting in enormous ocean waves moving outwards in all directions. Other causes may include volcanic eruptions, landslides, and even meteorites. Tsunamis have occurred throughout history in many countries, including Chile, Indonesia, Portugal, and Japan. In fact, Japan has invented a word to describe these towering ocean waves, tsunami, which means harbor wave in Japanese. Tsunamis can kill thousands of people in one event, so it's essential to know how to survive these life-threatening waves. There are three essential things you need to know about tsunamis. First, they travel 20 to 30 miles per hour, with waves that range between 10 feet to 100 feet high. Second, they cause flooding and disrupt communications, travel, power, and water supply. Lastly, tsunamis can happen in any coastal area. But how do you prepare for a tsunami? Esty and her family made sure that everyone knew what to do if this disaster came. To prepare for a tsunami, you need to do the following. Before Identify the signs of a tsunami, such as earthquakes, loud roars from the ocean, sudden rise or wall of water, and sudden draining of water that shows the ocean floor. Know and practice evacuation plans by mapping the routes from your home, work, and play to a highland area. Pick shelters that are at least a mile away from the coast. Strategize a family emergency communication plan. Sign up for the warning system in your community. Have earthquake and flood insurance policies through the National Food Insurance Program NFIP. Will SD and her family survive? Panic set in as SD saw people running and screaming in every direction. But SD quickly sprang into action. As the water rushed in, SD her family and friends ran as fast as they could to find higher ground. When the alarms went off, everyone ran to higher grounds and watched in horror as the tsunami destroyed everything in its path. Since they're all prepared, they know what to do during a tsunami. It's critical to stay safe and follow these tips. During If there is an emergency of a tsunami, evacuate immediately to a safe place as high and as far inland as possible, for those outside the tsunami zone stay in that area unless told to move by authorities. Grab something that floats when in the water. When on a boat, face the direction of the water and head out to sea. Go inland when in the harbor. The horror finally ended after three giant waves came rushing to the shore in the areas where houses were once standing. Esty can see the huge devastation. But because she knew what to do, she survived along with her family and friends. So, what now? What do you do after a tsunami? You should follow these tips to stay safe and start the recovery process. After Listen to local alerts for information on areas to avoid and places where shelter locations are. Call or use social media or any mode of communication available to communicate with family and friends. Avoid going near floodwater as it might contain debris or might be deeper than it seems. 
Do not touch electrical equipment. Be alert for underground or down power lines that can electrically charge water. Stay away from affected buildings and structures. Contact the healthcare provider for any injuries or sickness. Document property damage using pictures and conduct inventory. Contact the insurance company for assistance. Tsunamis are devastating, but with proper preparation and knowledge, we can survive and recover from these disasters. Remember to stay informed, have a plan, and follow evacuation orders to stay safe. Like Esti, we will know what to do if we seek for information even before disaster arrives. Knowledge will keep you safe. Want more videos like this? Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more videos from Science Times. See you in the next episode of How to Survive the Science Way.